I could be a rambler from the seven dial. Don't pay taxes, cause I never file. I don't do business that don't make me smile. I love my aeroplane, cause she got style. I'm a treetop flyer. Never tell Mom and Dale about this. Are we going to get in trouble when Dale sees my neck? I'm sorry, Grandma Ma. I'm sorry, Grandma Ma. There's blood. There's mayhem. There's disembowelment. Dismemberment. It's horrible. It's awful. You shouldn't be messing around with things you don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. We're going to turn the whole school into vampires, and there will be blood. What got into you? The whole student body is going to the nurse's office. Hey, oh, I know what my little angels are up to now. Disregard this call. You're hiding something. You were there, weren't you? You got nothing on me. The biggest thing I can I can emphasize is it's it's important to stay calm. We must vanquish the evil by any means necessary. What can we do, preacher? Kill all those vampires! Yeah! We're all gonna do something about it! Yeah! Yeah! These kids wanna suck our blood? The children have to feed. You've got to learn to control that temper of yours. Ah! Oh my god! Pretty dramatic there, I think. <laughs> hey, Jamie Walker here with you with the uh, talk of the town here. Whoops. Let's see. Uh, you know, the talk of the town here on a uh, Thursday. No, that's not right. What, what day is this? This is Monday. I can't get nothing right here. It's Monday. Okay. <laughs> Monday, you see, you know, you can see what it is. I usually don't do the uh, talk of the town on uh, Monday, and so I'm, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, I think I'm confused is what I am. But now, if you're watching this show, you you know, usually we'll, we'll, we'll be looking to see Jesse right now, so I'm not Jesse, and, uh, but this is the talk of the town here, and we have a uh, really good treat for you here today. You know, if you were looking at the Martins of Bulletin yesterday, you might have seen these guys in the Sunday paper, the and uh, this is Myron and uh, Matt Richard Smith, and they are the producers, directors, writers, and stars of Young Blood, Evil Intentions, and uh, we started things so off here just a little bit with uh, our, you know, our script from uh, the movie, and um, well, you know, we're uh, really excited to have you guys here, you know, you guys were on once before, and uh, you know, we were real tickled to have you on, and uh, it's... We're, we're almost there. It is the premiere is this Friday. Right. Tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, you know you did the, uh, the the Reader's Digest condensed version of the plot with your radio voice last time. You think you'd do it again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can do. I can do it today. <laughs> well, go ahead, give her a try. <laughs> well, let's see. I don't have the uh, paper in front of me, but um. Let's see, we have the story of Anive and Anastasia Winchester, um, two children um, uh -huh. brought up in a torn home. Um, we have the abusive father figure, that would be me, yeah. and the, um, the lovely wife, Olivia Winchester, which is Rebecca Kidd, which mm -hmm. uh, she'll be joining us later today. Right. And, um, boy, I tell you, um, 
my mind's racing, so maybe give me a minute. And I'll come back to me because I'm not. I'm never good at explaining the plot. It's one of those things you kind of have to see it, and um, it's got so many diverse plot elements going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to be real exciting. So I'm, I'm really look to, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely really hard to describe. <laughs> well, you know, uh, let's see now. It's sort of like uh, now the uh, the. You, you are the uh, father of two daughters, and one daughter is a vampire. And then the youngest daughter is having her birthday, and for a birthday present, she decides she's going to give her something special. She's going to turn her into a member of the undead. That is true. And then so you know, you guys have got to uh, cope with that. And then so um, <clears throat> you're trying to do something to her to keep her from... Uh, Expressing that you're sending her off to someplace, aren't right? You, yeah? Right. We want to send her away. So uh, she then they then form a cult of vampire children uh, to overthrow all the adults. And uh, we have a, you know, some definitely some opposition. There's going to be um, an angry mob led by the, um, you know, Reverend Jerry Jackson. So it's definitely some Jerry things. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I think he was in the scene that, that that I was in. He was the preacher at the at the at the church, and mm-hmm. he's like firing everybody up to go get these blood bloodthirsty vampires. Mm-hmm. So okay, well now you see one thing that is is really something special about this uh, this particular movie is that it is a local movie. It is uh, produced by folks from the Martin Henry County area, starring folks from the Martin Henry County area. And so, um, you know, you know, we got some uh, photographs right here. Let me see if I can bring these photographs up, and we can uh, uh, see some of the um, the uh, photographs of the making of uh, of the show here. Let's see if I can get that to come up there. There we go. Okay, what are we looking at here? Well, this is just a promo pic that was taken. It's not even a scene from the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Anastasia. That's the younger sister, the one who becomes a vampire. Right. And um, that's just a picture posed by Rita Smith, my mom. Yeah. She's also an actress in there. Now, this was something that, that uh, I, I think this is what kind of attracted me to be a part of the movie. I first saw a picture on Facebook with all of the crowd uh, that were gathering, and now they've got. Uh, now this, now this was uh, uh, shot uh, after the church scene, mm-hmm. and uh, we have all of these uh, uh, posters and stuff. And this is trying to get uh, folks riled up against the vampires. Can you tell us a little bit about how that, that uh, enters into the plot line? Yeah, this is the anti-vampire rally. So um, you, you definitely, you know, and. This is there's a scene with some you know news coverage and um, and with the basically you have them protesting. Uh, we have some signs here. Vampires are a pain in the neck. <laughs> Keep your fangs to yourself. I see a couple of them. So we're um, yeah. You know the town's definitely in an uproar because you know this Friday at the premiere we want to kind of recreate this scene with anybody's interested we want to have them come a little early at 7 oh. o'clock and oh, that'd be cool. we're going to have these little um, picket signs and, and let people just kind of run around and, and you know just recreate that scene alright uh, that's you know that's another thing I want to tell people about if you are, are, are looking to uh, find out more about uh, uh, how to uh, get tickets and so forth like that let me tell you a little bit about some of the contact information here the uh Young Blood Evil Intentions is going to be playing at the Reeves Theater. Uh, this Friday is going to be the world premiere. Uh, it's going to be at 9 o'clock, and then there's going to be an encore showing uh, the next day, Saturday, at 9 p.m., and then a matinee on uh, Sunday, uh, September 23rd, at 3 p.m. And so, um, kind, of, kind of cool stuff. Uh, you know, you guys have been working on this. How long have you been working on it? Uh, We've been working on it since uh, December the 16th. We went into production. That's when we had our first script reading. Um, you know, of course, we were writing on the script before that, maybe a year before that mm-hmm. and it started. And we wow. And decided to jump on it right more. We started putting it down real quick. So we wanted to get it out there before the kids got any taller or grew up in it. Yeah, yeah. Might have actually been the 17th because I think this Wednesday will actually make nine months since since we did begin production. Well, what made you think of uh, doing a movie in the vampire genre? 
Well, it just, um, that was one of the scripts that I had, I had one of many, you know, that I was just playing with, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's how it was, and, you know, they're not all vampire scripts, but this, this one was, and, like I said, we wanted to get it out there before the kids grew up. Yeah. Because we had other scripts we could just play with, and we could do them another time. Yeah. So, you know, it yeah. wouldn't matter. It doesn't star like children that we have in mind for the characters. Yeah. Well, now, if you'd like to uh, to uh, call in and ask these guys some questions, the numbers to call in is 632-5433. Or if you're calling out of the area or if you're watching on the Internet, the number to call is toll-free 866-670-5489. And let's go back and take a look at a few more photographs here of the production here. Let's see if I can get those rolling again. And uh, that was the, uh, well, it's still not what I want. Okay, let's try this one more time. We did want to um, remind people, too, that, um, that actually the premiere this Friday is currently sold out. But uh, we oh, yeah? do still have tickets for Saturday and Sunday available. So we do want to let people know that. And if, and if you want to get a ticket for the matinee or for the, um, uh, the, uh, the encore we're showing on Saturday. Uh, the, uh, the the ticket information uh, would be uh, you can buy tickets at, at Stafford's Music Center, uh, Woodall's Music Center, and uh, also you can uh, if you're going down towards the Eden Way, you can uh, stop by the Screaming Ink Tattoo, and that's in Eden, North Carolina. And then what's your sign in in Uptown Martinsville? That's uh, uh, over there next to our uh, arts, et cetera. And uh, the tickets are $7, and uh, this is really good. And, you know, I, I really want to uh, congratulate you guys for, for, for selling out. That's, that's a, that's a, that, that is really good. So, so how many tickets do you think you've sold in, uh, for that? Well, there's 212 yep. seats there at the Reeves. So. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's really fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And so you're going to have some folks to come out and, uh, and, and, and and recreate the picket scenes right out in front of it. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just encourage people to come dressed up however they want to. If you want to come dressed like yeah. a vampire or something. You know, early Halloween. Yeah. Thing, you know, you know like your favorite characters from the movie if you know them. You know, I, I was thinking about this. You know, that, you know, go ahead and, and you know, we have the world premiere and then we have um, get people acquainted with the movie and so forth like that. And, you know, I, I don't think it would be really remiss to see if you could bring it back again on Halloween night. Yeah. <laughs> good possibility. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be good. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, let's go back to our photographs and see what else we got here. I, I, I would encourage folks to give us a call, 632-5433 or 866-670-5489. What are we looking at here? Uh, this is a scene um, at the uh, courthouse, municipal building. I can't tell too much about it because it's kind of might be a plot killer. But uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. It's, we got a lot of extras together that day, and I remember it, it was real fun when we did it. That's on Church Street. Yeah, we've actually filmed quite a few scenes on Church Street. Now this right here is. Uh, uh, with Jason Newlander? Jameson. Jameson Newlander. Jameson okay, Jason. Jameson Newlander. <laughs> Jameson Newlander. And he, uh, those of you who are familiar with the Lost Boys movies, he played Alan Frog. And uh, in, in, in uh, let's see, there was three of them, wasn't there? There was. Yeah, it? and I think he was, in all, he was in all three of them. What is his part in the movie? He's the mayor. Of, of the town, it's actually called uh, Martindale. Is actually the name of the town in this film. <laughs> I, I was going to ask mayor. you if it, if it was going to be Martinsville. It would have been fun to get Kim Atkins to do it. <laughs> 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 she probably would have done it. She's a good sport, but I don't know. Uh, now this is uh, you guys have a lot of folks that that do artwork for you, and I uh, have uh, always thought that this was a. Oh, that's not going uh, I always thought this was a particularly. Uh, uh, pretty poster here, kid. You know who, who who drew this and what was the story behind this? Okay, this is Leslie Sage. Mm -hmm. um, this is from um, from England, and uh, she, I believe she just found this on the Facebook and and was inspired by some of the pictures. This is like there's a photo that this resembles. And yeah. She did a painting of the photo and 
sure. just kind of touched him up, made him look a little scarier because yeah, you know, it didn't look like that in the photo. But <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff there. That really, it's like the, it looked like, reminds me of the zombie version of Anna Vay and Anastasia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. I think. Uh, it's about time for us to. No, no, I, I tell you, but I think we can look at some more photographs here. Let's do that before we let's, take another commercial here. Let's, let's look at a few more. Sure. <laughs> let's see, let me get them up here. There we go. Well, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I need? I need the thing from Jeopardy to play here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because everybody knows that makes everything easy. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't there have the Jeopardy go. thing going. Doesn't put the pressure on at all. Okay. Now. There we go. Roll that sucker. And we go to the next one. There we go. Now, this person right here is somebody pretty familiar. This looks like Eddie Munster. It is. It is Eddie I'm Munster. what type this one might be. <laughs> How did you get Eddie Munster to be in this show? <laughs> uh, we, had to, we had to, you know, show him the script and get him to, you know, we, just, we had to sell him on the idea. Cause, now, did did he come down here to do this? Um, no, this was this was filmed in L.A. This was filmed, well, well, now, it's, it's, see, now that's one thing that that that, that may be confusing this, to people. Now, there are there there are some famous people in this movie, but they didn't come here to do it. How did you work that out? Well, well, with a lot of them, we did. Um, with this one in particular, we had to work it out some other way, but um, a lot of them we went to conventions and um, you know film festivals and things where, where celebrities were, and then we talked to them. I mean, we've probably talked to about 30 different celebrities or their agents, yeah. um, people that we just kind of hand-selected, thought would be great. You know, most yeah. of them were into vampire movies or some kind yeah. of, played some kind of vampire character sometimes. Not all of them, some of them were just another... Actors or actresses we're interested in. But. Yeah, we try to find characters we thought they enjoy playing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think this is a fun character. I, I love the expression in this particular photo. So, what did they do? Take the video out in LA and then, like, um, mail it to you or something like that on tape? Yeah, they had to send it to me. Yeah. You did that with several people, too. Um, yeah, just two. The other ones we filmed there. Um, the, these guys out here, they just have, um, he had an assistant, Ethan Tudor W, mm -hmm. um, that filmed up for him, and he's a real nice guy. He, he's actually been on some shows, too, just not, not the um, Monsters. I think he might have been on an episode or two as an extra, uh. or in um, some other shows. I can't even remember one right off, but I've seen some examples. But. Yeah. And this was at the Rollabout, and I, got, I can recall that. Now, let's see, what is this here? Now, this is a scene that uh, we filmed at Irisburg Elementary School, and um, that's our mother, uh, Rita Smith, <laughs> in the teacher's desk. And now uh, we have a clip of her in action here we're going to show a little bit later on in the show, so uh, kind of interesting stuff there. Uh, and speaking of school, this looks like you were in a classroom somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where was this shot at? This is also at Irisburg Elementary. This is the same day, and um, uh, it's a, actually I think a different scene in a different classroom right there. But um, we had a couple little parts and stuff that were in the school. Well, you know, this is uh, the, the, this this thing is whole. It's like the middle school becomes vampires, and so you have um, uh, a whole lot of this is uh, shot with kids in um, in the setting that the kids would be. Uh, 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 acclimated to so they're it's it's during the school year so uh, they're uh, a lot of this is shot at stools and I think it's really cool that you got uh, folks uh, with the stool systems and and, and what have you to, uh, to, to 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 help you with that and you actually had kids from the stools be in the movie so how did you work that out well, one thing we did do that was pretty um, interesting is the um, the the building was completely cleaned out we actually had to um, you know, we had to have some favors and borrow the desks, mm -hmm. and the school desks. So, and uh, we had to go out and um, purchase posters from, you know, Dollar Tree, you know, to, to make it look more lively. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah so, um, 
Because they, they had a school for us, but it was bare. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm not sure what the fate of that building is now, um, but I believe, if when I heard last, that they were looking into turning it into a church. But, um, you know, so it may look different now. It, it mm-hmm. may, you know, may have changed on the inside of it. Well, that's something similar to what they did with uh, the Spencer Penn Center. They have really turned that into a community center that, that a lot of people uh, uh, frequent and use it for all kinds of things, uh, live shows, uh, musical shows, um, uh, family reunions, wedding receptions. Uh, and it's, um, you know, it sort of reminded me of that. There's still a lot of classrooms at Spencer Penn Center that, that, that still look like that. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe on your next one you might want to talk to them about doing something. Yeah, and <laughs> when we went in there, there were still some, some evidence of yeah. when there were classes. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure um, how many years it's been since it's been used as an elementary school, but yeah. there's still little reward stickers and things like that. This is the photograph that first introduced me to you guys. I had a friend of mine who, who sent me a link on Facebook with this photograph, and I got interested in your project from, from, this, uh, from this photograph right here. This is taken in front of the uh, Jefferson Plaza, and the first time I saw it, I, I thought it was serious, and I'm thinking, well, what is this with the vampires? And, uh, you know, when you have these uh, uh, people out here picketing, does that sort of like... How, how do people that are driving by respond to that? Uh, well, we do have some people kind of you know, riding by slow and, and honk the horns and wave at us. Some people really didn't understand at all what was going on. Well, how computers. would they? Yeah. Um, I, I seen a couple of people come by and they actually took pictures with their cell phones. And, and they were just like, wow, what is this? <laughs> Because I think when you normally do a movie, they, they can block the streets off and yeah. just bring in extras and the cars that go by or, or yeah. you know, plan. But these, this was just, yeah. you know, our people, but we, we couldn't close off the streets or anything. So people just rode by and it didn't bother things. Approximately how many people you think are involved in this movie? Anywhere, uh, at least, anywhere from, I would say close to 200 people. Probably about 150 people, maybe. Wow. That'd probably be a... a 150 is probably more of a conservative estimate. So. Wow. Yeah. I need, really need to get down and look at the papers, but there's so many people who are in it as multiple roles and, and various things like that. And, 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 and then there's, you know, so I need to really sit down and check it out. So. I know in that church scene it was probably close to 100 people, and then, and, and then throughout the other scenes, the, the angry mob scenes that were filmed over at the Daily Grind and you guys. Yeah. You know, that definitely, and then at the roll about. You know, different people coming to different scenes so definitely added up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's um, you know, this is really a testament to social media because that's how you put this together anyway. You put, you know, you put posts on Facebook and people start talking about it and people came in and stuff like that. So, uh, that, and then you um, actually, uh, uh, well, that's that's how I found out about it. And I think you did some of your fundraising uh, with Kickstarter and stuff like that and. Uh, Pretty cool thing, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's sort of expensive to do something like this, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, the, 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 there's a lot of things that that, that well, it, even when you're talking about with the uh, the uh, scene with the stool, you had to go and buy posters and stuff like that. You know, you start adding that up. First thing you know, you know, you've spent some bucks on that thing. Yeah, and they didn't have running water, so we had to get a porter john that day. Oh, God, yeah. really? We, yeah, we didn't even know until we got there that morning. They're like, well, the bathrooms don't work here. And we're like, huh, got to get a porter john. So. Well, well, how did you do that? Call up. Uh, we have an emergency. Uh. Pretty much, pretty much. I told them to come on out. Call Handy John. I've, we figured that'd be better than people leaving because there, there's, you know, for them to go to a bathroom, there's like a store maybe two miles down yeah. the road from there. I mean, they would have to go a ways. They might not come back. So it's, oh, gosh. We retain these extras to keep them here. You know? And so you called them up and they just came right that out here with it? Yeah, they're there in about 20 minutes. Wow. It, uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a funny story. Uh, who, who is this guy right here now? It's Count Smokula. Count Smokula. What, pray tell, is a Count Smokula? Uh, it's a uh, he's a vampire <laughs> character. He's a um, actor, singer, songwriter, musician. He plays multiple instruments, including accordion and guitar. He is really cool. I you know I had never heard him before. Uh, I, 
when we did the show the last time, uh, I, I downloaded one of his songs, and he, he is really cool. As a matter of fact, you know, I, you know, we might play that again here because it, it, it is it, it is a pretty cool song. And uh, so, stay tuned, folks. We got a lot of stuff here to show you. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people enjoyed that last time. Yeah, yeah. And you look forward to a new song in a song that he did called Young Blood. It's made specifically for the movie. Yeah. And nobody's heard it yet except for just a few. Yeah. And you were, and you incorporate it into the movie. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, as well as the Eric Anders also wrote a song called Young Blood. He's, he's from out that way too, and he sent me a song and we incorporated that in there too. So is that gonna be like a music video, or is that like music while the credits are rolling, or, or it's kind of like background music? You know, while all the action's going on. All right, let's uh, let's see what else we got to look at here. There's Count Smokula. And uh, let's move on to the next slide here. And uh, now, uh, who, who do we have here now? I, I can tell that's Myron, but now who's 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 the young lady here? That's Rebecca Kidd, and she plays Olivia Winchester, the mother of. Anastasia and, and Annabe. And she's done, uh, you know, she's out here, you know, you, know you, you suppose we could coax her to be on the show a little later in another segment, maybe? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we could. Come on, come on. All right. And so she's the mother. And, uh, and uh, here's, here's the scene I'm most, uh, most acquainted with. This is uh, the church scene. And if you're watching television, if you'll look on the right-hand side, kind of middle ways, you'll see my smiling face right there. <laughs> Just barely can't see me there, but uh, that was really cool. I tell you, the guy that played the preacher, he, he really did did have everybody fired up. And uh, uh, when I saw the trailer, it, it really amazed me how much energy uh, that, that, that all, all, all the crowd, I mean, everybody that, 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 that does this, they wouldn't do it if they weren't a big ham, and so it really showed. <laughs> Pretty good stuff there, for sure. Yeah. I've known him for a long time. We were actually in a um, play together back in 1999 in Magna Vista. Yeah? Yeah, he was a stage performer. Now, this right here is the uh, poster that's uh, at the Reese Theater. Let me pull that uh, telephone graphic down there so people can see it. Uh, I was over at the Reeves Theater uh, last uh, last Saturday filming a bluegrass band, and I saw that poster up there, and I thought, oh, man, that, that really looks cool uh, up in the marquee that way. And so uh, I guess that is really a cool feeling to uh, walk by the Reeves Theater and see a poster of your movie and then look up at the marquee, and there's, there's Young Blood, Evil Intentions in the marquee. Yeah. Did they get that on there yet? Yeah. And yeah. They got that on. yeah. I hadn't seen oh, that. Yeah. I just saw the post. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. It's there. You need to you, you need, to, need to check it out. You need to take a picture of that, too. Yeah, that, yeah that, That'll really, uh, uh, you know, that's that's just real special there. Yeah. Uh, and then here's, uh, uh, this guy here, he was like a uh, TV reporter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. TV reporter, yeah. So what was going on with this? Uh, this is part of the angry mob scene. When you see it, it's like um, a news segment, and um, so he's sitting on here talking. This is Dick Jansen from the Star News, and he's he's just basically reporting about the, uh, the murders and things that's going on in the town, and and and, and this anti-vampire rally. That's why everybody's there. And, uh, they just talk it up. Pretty cool. And then here's more. Uh, from uh, that same session when we take the uh, church scene, this is out in front, uh, I think Starling Avenue, is it? Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the vampire kids. Yeah, I think it's more probably a behind the scenes shot, I think. Yeah. Is, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah then we just kind of got them all together because they weren't in the scene that we were filming, and since they were there, some of the parents took some pictures. And yeah. There we had <laughs> I do want to remind folks, if you'd like to be uh, a part of history here, as far as I know, this is the first time that Martinsville and Henry County has ever had a movie made in Martinsville and Henry County 
by people from Martinsville and Henry County, starring people from Martinsville and Henry County, and premiering in Martinsville and Henry County. So uh, you too can be a part of history. The, uh, the the tickets are sold out for this Friday show, but if they're not, there's still some uh, tickets available for Saturday and Sunday. The uh, show starts uh, Friday, uh, to, uh, this, this Friday, September 21st at 9 p.m., and then Saturday, uh, September 22nd at 9 p.m., and then uh, that's the Encore showing, and then the matinee showing Sunday, September 23rd at 3 p.m. And uh, if you'd like to get tickets, uh, what you need to do is um, there's still some places where you can pick up some tickets. You can pick them up at Stafford's Music Center or uh, Woodall's Music or you can go to What's Your Sign in Uptown Martinsville, or if uh, folks down around the Eden, North Carolina uh, area, you can pick it up at Screaming Ink Tattoo. All right. Uh, I guess we need to take a, a little bit of a commercial break, and we are going to take that break. And when we come back out of that break, we've got uh, lots more for you. And so you just don't go away. We'll be back right after this, okay? But you better not mess with me. The whole student body is going to the nurse's office. I'll be right over. Thanks, sir. Anyway, get in here now! At Collinsville Furniture Mart, we're proud of our large selection of American-made bedroom and living room collections. We're especially proud of our Vaughn Bassett bedroom suits. Based in Galax, Virginia, Vaughn Bassett Furniture has grown to be the largest manufacturer of wooden adult bedroom furniture in the United States, with 95% of their furniture being made by workers here in America. 99% of the lumber that they use comes from within 500 miles of the factory. And thanks to Vaughn Bassett's one-for-one -one program, one tree gets planted for every tree they use. Here at Collinsville Furniture Mart, we strongly believe in supporting local economies like Vaughn Bassett. Because of our strong relationships with companies like Vaughn Bassett, we're able to provide our customers with unmatched service, quality, and value while keeping good jobs here in the United States. Come see us, Collinsville Furniture Mart, top of the hill in Collinsville. Do you have a car, a truck, a house, or a trailer you want to sell? Maybe you're looking for a fishing boat or a motorcycle. How about a home for that litter of puppies that the family dog just had? Or maybe you have a small business, you work out of your home, and nobody knows what you do. Well, the Martinsville Media Classifieds are for you. The program airs six days a week, Monday through Saturday, live in the mornings on WHEE and WMVA radio stations and on TV40. And it replays in the evenings on TV40 for maximum exposure. And we'll advertise your items or your services for only $15 a week. That's $15 a week. It's simple. Just go to our website at martinsvillemedia.com and click on the forum, purchase your classified with a credit card online. Or call us at 632-2152. Again, that's martinsvillemedia.com. Click on forum or call us at 632-2152. Don't waste time. Call today. The best value in Country Club membership is Forest Park Country Club, located at the end of beautiful Treeline Mulberry Road, and our special membership rate is just $100 a month. Forest Park Country Club is open to the public as well. This course will challenge every part of your golf game. Come join us at the park. 18 holes of play, $17 Monday through Thursday, $23 Friday through Sunday. A $15.50 Tuesday special for the ladies and a $15.50 Thursday special for seniors 60 and over. Walk in subject to tee time availability. Call the Pro Shop for tee times. The telephone number at 276 632 1711. Forest Park Country Club is conveniently located at 1821 Mulberry Road in Martinsville. Give us a call if you have any questions, 632-1711, but more importantly, get out those golf clubs and come join us for a round at the park. 
If you're looking for a good deal on a set of new or used tires, then we invite you to come by and see Gill's Tires, located conveniently at 7-Eleven Memorial Boulevard in Martinsville. At Gill's Tires, we specialize in used tires, and when it comes to tires, we know quality, and we take pride in making you a satisfied customer. We're ready to meet any of your tire needs. Harry Gill has years of experience in the tire industry, so rest assured that your vehicle is fitted properly. Good tires improve gas mileage and reduce service costs. So call Gill today, 618-2048 or 632-0836. We look forward to being of service. Harvey Gardner has been in business for over 28 years and he's worked for most of the major furniture companies and also for local furniture stores. He does sofas, chairs, and recliners. And he has cloth fabric and vinyl in stock and sample books to choose from. Look at this Martinsville Media Couch before and look at it after, just like brand new. He also makes headboards for beds and cornices for windows. And he has all different thicknesses of foam rubber for seats and backs. And Gardner's Upholstery specializes in churches. They do church pews and chairs, putting on new fabric and new seat foam padding. Call Gardner's Upholstery today. They're located on the Oak Level Road beside the Bassett Country Club. 340-3225. That's 340-3225. Gardner's Upholstery. New fabrics for a new look. That boy don't look right He walks on two feet But he's not really alive His eyes look like stones Planted in his head Maybe she's right He really is dead Oh, oh, oh. He's a zombie Oh, oh A zombie In a circle, he must be in a dance. You say hello, he just looks blank. His skin's like the steel of a vault in a bank. Oh, 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 oh. he's a zombie. He's cold as ice He's been dead once But he's been alive twice Oh A zombie Oh A zombie Try that again with the mic on. How about that? Okay. <laughs> uh, that was, you know, I'm uh, filling in for uh, uh, Jesse, who is uh, out and about here. Jamie walked here on the uh, uh, talk of the town here for a Monday, and uh, uh, we're talking about uh, a movie that my friends here have made. Uh, here's Myron and Matt Smith, and they've uh, come up with a movie that uh, is going to be premiering this week. Uh, Young Blood, Evil Intentions is going to be at the uh, Reeves Theater, starting, uh, uh, the, well, I think the show is sold out here for, uh, for Friday, but there's going to be a Saturday showing and a uh, Sunday matinee, and so the Saturday show is going to be at 9 o'clock, and the matinee is at 3, and that's going to be at the Reeves Theater, and uh, also, pretty cool stuff, they've got, um, uh, the, the show is sold out for this Friday, but, uh, and it's going to be at 9 o'clock at the Reeves Theater. And uh, this movie is, uh, it, it's, we got Halloween coming up, and it's sort of an interesting plot. It's uh, basically you have a uh, older daughter that uh, turns the younger daughter into a vampire for a birthday present. 
and then it, 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 one thing leads to another and they turn their whole class into vampires and then the town has to deal with it. And this is all shot with uh, local folks here at, uh, in the area. Uh, you're going to see a lot of scenes in this movie that you're going to recognize. They're, 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 they're places that you drive past every day. And uh, it's really cool. And uh, I think you said there was about 150 uh, local folks in this movie. And uh, pretty cool stuff. It really is. And uh, But now there is a lot of things, too, that uh, are, are, are different in the respect that uh, there are people that are not from around here that are uh, making cameos. And some people have major parts in this movie. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of those folks. Now, we had... Uh, uh, we played a video here a little while ago, just as we're coming out of the break, of Count Smokula. Uh, for, for, for those who are just uh, joining us, can you tell me a little bit about who Count Smokula is and, and how, how you guys got up with that guy? Uh, he's, um, <clears throat> he's a musician, so I used to be on the Count Smokula show, he's the host of that. He's, he's, he's a great actor, he does things as Count Smokula, he does things as Robert Miles too. He's, you know, yeah. multiple act, you know, yeah. makes a great Einstein as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, we just, uh, when we was writing a script and we was thinking of people that, it, it just had this young blood written all over it. We just thought he might be somebody that would be, you know, would be willing to get involved. And Well, how did you meet and, Stout, Count Smokula? Where did you meet Count Smokula at? Well, I just found his, um, his, his information, you know, like his um, fine information. I just contacted him and, yeah. and we hit it off real well. And, yeah. and just, uh, got him, you know, same thing with Butch. Yeah, I kind of saw him on the script, you know, just send him what you can. And, and Count Smokula sort of, you know, reminds me of sort of like a uh, uh, demented Weird Al Yankovic in the respect that, that he writes all these songs that are parodies of... Uh, I don't know, sort of macabre sort of th things like uh, th this particular one uh, about a zombie, and, and now he's done other things that are kind of like the uh, uh, the horror genre. What are some of the other things that he's done? Like some other songs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I know he does uh, the song. You know, he does a lot of songs for other movies and yeah. stuff too. He does a song, uh, Poultry Guys, to the song uh, called Behoodlement. Um, the one for the vampire movie. Yeah. Uh, he's got that. Uh, Boris, the sort of reminds me of. Uh, I, I wish I could think of the character, uh, but uh, the, 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 there was a cartoon that was on when I was gr growing up. It had a. Uh, uh, the, the, it was all in cahoots with the, with the Road Runner. It was all. It was part of the Road Runner show, and it was Ardvark. And it, it Count Smoke, it sounds exactly like the Ard Ardvark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talks exactly like him. Uh, but now uh, there are there are some. Uh, some some interesting people that that are involved in this and uh that's not what i want i want this here and um and smokula he also he plays the grandfather of anime in the film there he is <laughs> count smoke he's he's his grandfather her, i mean she, she it, let, 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 let me get my genders right he is her Grandfather, thank you. Okay, he's uh, you know, he looks like he's trying to do Gene Simmons there. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely diverse, longest tongue you've seen this side of Gene Simmons. <laughs> yeah, Count Smokula, pretty cool. Now, uh, folks who who do independent films, especially folks who do movies like uh, like you guys that are doing uh. A, a vampire movie. Know know who this man here is. This is Lloyd Kaufman. Now, now when you think of the movie biz, you think of uh, folks who have like big budget Hollywood studios. And uh, but you know something uh, with the invent of uh, affordable, high quality cameras that people can get without having to spend an arm and a leg, and then the video editing software. There is there is more and more folks you know like you guys that are, are making movies. And uh, and that's really really cool. But now the person that I think is really a pioneer for someone who who has made independent films, especially in the in the horror genre, has to be Lloyd Kaufman. Now uh, you, you guys are probably thinking, well, who is Lloyd Kaufman? Well, now if you ever uh, saw the movies, uh, the Toxic Avenger series, well, now all this comes from Lloyd Kaufman. Now back in 1974, Lloyd and his business partner Michael Hertz. 
uh, founded a, a production company called Troma Entertainment, and they uh, they cranked out a whole big string of those real funny, hard, dark, dark funny, uh, I guess dark humor. Uh, I, th- I thought they were funny myself. I got a big kick out of them. Uh, these, uh, these, these horror films. And in 1985, um, uh, uh, Kaufman began producing the Toxic Avenger series, and uh, he's had some pretty, pretty much mainstream success with those movies. And uh, this has really been uh, something that, that that has inspired a lot of folks to make uh, independent <laughs> horror films and, and, and things like that. And he's, uh, you know, you might know the Toxic Avenger series, or you might know. The class of Newcomb High. Now, Myron, I think you know a little bit about that movie here, and uh, I think this guy that's standing next to Lloyd looks a whole lot like you. Think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must have an evil twin out there. Somewhere. No, that yeah, that is me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you know, tell us about this. What you know, you know, how did you get up with him, and 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 what are you guys doing here together? Okay. Well, this is um, on the set of Return to the Class of Newcomb High which um, is the f- fourth movie in the series. And um, I'm really excited about uh, seeing it. I'm going to be in it. I'm not sure how much of my footage will make the cut, so I'm, I'm very interested to see uh-huh. that put together. But, um, but yeah, this is in New York. Um, I, I took this about a month ago. I, I lose track of the days with everything yeah. going on. But, yeah. but, um, well, I imagine that was really a... a you know, that wasn't a small moment for you because you've told me before that you really liked those those Newcomb High movies and to be in one, that, you know, that's sort of a, you know, that's an extra special treat, isn't it? Well, yeah, and I definitely like the original one. Um, and, and this, I think this new one will definitely be, you know, as good if not better than the original. Um, you know, the original is one of my favorite films. So I am definitely excited about it. And it was nice to meet Lloyd, and, you know. Yeah. Now, we talked about this in the earlier segment here. Um, the, um, now, those of you who are, are fans of the vampire genre certainly will, not, will remember the 1987 cult classic, The Lost Boys. Well, guess what? One of the stars of The Lost Boys, uh, Jameson Newlander, you might remember him from The Lost Boys as his, uh, in his role as uh, Alan Frog. And uh, he's also in uh, Matt Myron's movie, uh, Young Blood, Evil Intentions. He plays the mayor. And um, pretty cool stuff. Um, how did you get a hold of how did you get a hold of him? Um, we went to a convention and it was the uh, twenty fifth year anniversary of the Lost Boys. And they had um, him out there and about uh, three other guys from there that were in the movie and then G Tom Mack, the guy that made the song, the theme song for the movie. He was there as well, and um, but all of them were really great guys. So um, just talked to them, and you know, in those three days that we were there, kind of got them convinced into it. Yeah. You know, the, see, now, who'd you say we, you were doing music? G. Thomas, what now? G. Tom Matt. I see now, you know, did. didn't you tell me that you uh, did a vi- video for him? Yeah, I filmed this. I filmed the show, and then mm-hmm. you know, I sent him a DVD after. Mm-hmm. And that's probably one of the things that helped him. Uh, you know, Jameson asked me to do it, and I did it. And he was like, "All right, man, I'll do this for you." Oh, that's cool. Kind of like a. I don't want to say trade. It's just like I did a favor for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You know what? One hand washes the other, yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. Yeah. G. Tom Mack, he did the, the Cry Little Sister song from the movie. That you uh-huh. hear. Cool. Yeah. Well, now, you can't have a uh, movie without a pretty girl. And you've got, two, you, you've, got, you've got several pretty girls in this movie here. And we're going to meet one of them here in the next segment. But uh, here's one that uh, is uh, one of the Scream Queens. Uh, her name is Sierra Holmes. And uh, uh, she's also in, in the cast of Young Blood, and she's no stranger to the horror movie genre. Sierra is best known for her appearances in VH1 Scream Queens, Reality Hell, which is a, a series that was uh, done back in 2009, and Scream Queens 2 back in 2010, and this year's release of Scary Story Slumber Party, and uh, that is a compilation of different horror stories, and she is in the Unlucky segment. Not that, that, that she was unlucky to be in the segment. That's just the segment that she was in, the segment entitled The Unlucky. 
Also, she was in uh, Piranha 3DD, and coming out uh, is uh, soon is going to be uh, The Legacy of the Mast and Night of the Cannibal Cannibals, and of course, Youngblood <laughs> Evil Intentions. Now, what was it like to work with her? I mean, she's uh, she's she's right sharp looking chick there for sure. Yeah, she definitely was fun to work with, and and it was definitely you know it's definitely a fun scene. You can see us in the trailer where uh, she is slapping me down to the ground, and yeah. it's it's good stuff. You know, it's one of, you know it's nice to be able to have stuff like that in your movie. Yeah, yeah, you know you got so much texture to this. There's just so many cameos with. Uh, uh, famous people and semi-famous people and then uh, folks that are just famous around here. And uh, now, this right here is a disturbing image to me. <laughs> it is like a, a twist of Santa Claus and a vampire. And uh, this is Sal Lizard. I, I, I think this guy's a little creepy. But uh, I tell you, I tell you, you know, you see that picture, you certainly don't remember it. And he is Sal Lizard, a vampire Santa. And it's such a twisted combination. It combines uh, Christmas and Halloween. Now, uh, Sal Lizard is uh, from, he's been in some movies too. He hit uh, Hillbilly Bob Zombie and Creature from the Hillbilly Lagoon. Now, uh, now I believe Sal's going to be coming uh, to the premiere, isn't he? He sure is. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, he's going to be there for the premiere um, and Saturday as well. Um, he made him do a little stand-up comedy on Saturday. Oh, the, you know, no, no, is he is he stand-up comic? Yeah, uh, yeah. I just didn't know that until recently. Yeah. It, it, on his repertoire of many things he does, that's one of them too. Um, so apparently, he has multiple personas as a stand-up comic, and the Vampire Santa uh -huh. happens to be one of them. Huh. But so now, is he going to do a little bit uh, during the movie? Then I mean, after the movie or before? Well, our, uh, what we're going to do uh, for Saturday is um, he'll do a little bit. You know, before the movie. Then after the movie on Saturday, we're going to have a, a question and answer session with, uh, so with now, me you're not, and Matt on Saturday. You're not going to be doing that on Friday then? Um, no, but on Friday he will be there and, you know, he'll have, um, you know, uh, T-shirts and, you know, some of his photos for autograph and things like that. I'll have a table set up and, you know, be able to meet yeah. him and stuff. But on, um, on Saturday will actually be where he'll actually... Um, you know, speak a little bit before the movie, and uh, and th then we'll have our question and answer thing um, on Saturday after the movie. So it would really behoove people to come to both both showings, wouldn't it? Because you're gonna have stuff on Saturday that you're not gonna be able to see on Friday. Yeah, we're gonna do things on Friday too. You know, so we've got the yeah. we're gonna reenact the scene Friday. We're not doing that Saturday, yeah. and then. We're gonna yeah. have the, maybe the comedy. You know, Friday night we're probably, we're gonna come out and speak. Yeah. You know, and yeah. So they'll just probably come out and play some of us and do that. So we do have different things planned, different little antics for both nights. Cool, that sounds and, good. And um, working on some some things for Sunday too. You know, yeah. So yeah. It really, you know, you might would you would even want to come all three nights. Yeah. You can, yeah. If you can make it, and I would, I would encourage it. They're all well, going to be different. Well, I'm going to try to make all three of them okay because I'm 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 really excited about it. And now we got somebody jingling the line. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, hello, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, this is sure Bacon. Yeah, hey! <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> I tell you, Matt and Myron are some fantastic guys to work with. Thanks, Cletus. This is Cletus Earls calling. He plays, he plays the sheriff in the movie. Yeah, uh, let's see. I'm, 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 I'm looking for your picture here, Cletus. <laughs> it, and Saturday is going to be your birthday, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure is. Oh, right. Are we allowed to say... What year it's going to be? You, you want to put that out there? Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I'm, I'm used to being on the back side of a camera myself and uh, taking pictures and doing all that kind of stuff. And this is the first time I've been in front of a camera. Yeah. And um, it's been uh, an amazing uh, trip for me. Now, Cletus, have you ever done any sort of uh, community theater before? Uh, you know, are, or is this your first debut as acting as well as movies? This, this is my first debut of acting, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, Myron and uh, Matt can tell you I made plenty of bloopers and uh, I'm saying a few parts and lines that I do have to say. But uh, it was all fun. Well, tell me, how did you get involved in this? 
How did you find out about it? <laughs> um, I went to school with uh, Matt and Marilyn's mother, uh-huh. and uh, we stay in touch. And uh, uh, she uh, asked me that since I was retired, I could uh, uh, dress up as a cop and be in this movie her kids were uh, producing. And I, I kept, nah, I didn't, I, I, not, I don't feel comfortable in front of a camera. Yeah. And um, then she told me that, well, you just have to dress up. Don't say anything. Just dress up and be there. <laughs> um, so I said, okay, I'll do it. And uh, uh, just help out. And uh, they uh, started writing some script for me, to, or some lines for me to say. And uh, it was, that's how it evolved. Yeah. You made, I think you made a great cop. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You know, when I first saw this, I thought I thought you were a police officer. I, I thought, you know, when I first started seeing pictures of you, uh, you know, that was pasted on the uh, uh, Facebook page about it, I thought that you were a, a, a off-duty cop and you were in there because you were real believable as a cop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, some people thought uh, that we uh, could, had the police call. Uh, I'm really a mild-mannered person, and uh, Matt Myron had to, you know, really bring out some anger in him. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure he did. And that was good that they could do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So now, do you have any uh, aspirations of continuing uh, to do acting? Uh, are you are you thinking about maybe... Maybe get involved in community theater around here in town, maybe with the black box or something uh, like that. Not, not really. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, if Byron and Matt ever need me for anything else, uh, I'll sure uh, be glad to help the guys out. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, I certainly do appreciate you calling in, and uh, thank you. And yeah. uh, if, you know, and thank you for your uh, your your part in the movie. I think you you really added a lot to it. It sure did. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks I'll for coming. I'll see you guys later. Thanks. All right, see you. And that's uh, Cletus Earls, and uh, there, there are a lot of folks around here who know who Cletus is. Uh, uh, Cletus plays the uh, part of Sheriff Bacon, but, you know, if, if you've been around Marshall Henry County as long as I have, you probably know Cletus from the Henry County Rescue Squad. He joined the Rescue Squad when he was 16, and he's been a lifelong member, and so he's been part of this movie, and a uh, um, lot of fun. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Who, who, who are we speaking with? Nicole Bridges. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Nicole. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm looking forward to Friday. All right. Great. We're looking forward to it, too. And Nicole plays in the movie, too. She's a, she's a girl named Pamela Nicole. Just kind of came up with the name on the wind there. Oh, yeah? She was just going to be an extra in one scene, and then the character just kept developing, and since it's been a pretty, pretty decent major role. Uh, you know, it seemed like I remember there was a, you know, was there a scene at the at the, uh, the uh, rollabout uh, birthday party where she said, come on, Pamela, we're going, uh, mm-hmm. as, you know, Cindy took her off. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. Yeah, and Cindy plays her mother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you there. And it was really good working with you on the stuff, too. All right. Well, we, well, we appreciate you calling, you're calling in, and we're looking forward to seeing you at the premiere this Friday. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So long. You, 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 had, you had a lot of kids in this movie, a whole lot of kids in this movie. How is it like to work with all those kids? It's pretty wild, um, but um, really the kids, they were all real well-behaved, and they were all, you know, <laughs> For the most part, you know, really interested in, um, you know, wanting to do it. Um, the worst was just dealing with with mine, my child and uh, stepdaughter. And it's a challenge. Got yeah. They're the ones that had the little uh, star attitudes, you know, because they're the main stars. And yeah. I think if you have children or animals, it definitely it's an added challenge. <laughs> Unpredictable. They, they we learned that uh, from absolutely. the last, last <laughs> absolutely. Time show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a little surprising. You know, we'll just uh, let that go down in history, boy. <laughs> you know, you know, there, you know, there are probably about uh, maybe a, a, a dozen things you, you know, you don't supposed to say on the radio, and uh, they said one of them. <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Hello, this is Austin. Hey, Austin, how you doing? Good. How are you? We're doing good. Good. Yeah. Now, Austin, are you in the movie too? 
Yeah, I'm in the movie. I'm playing as a part as Jeffrey, and I killed Rita Smith. <laughs> We're going to see a little bit of a clip of that here a little bit later. Yeah. His character killed Rita Smith. <laughs> <laughs> don't come... Don't police don't come to his door. <laughs> well, boy, now that would be something. You said Toledo's over there in, 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 in the costume. It's okay. <laughs> oh, if our phones are tapped, the, the I police. I just called to say thank you for letting that. me be, able, be, in, be in the movie, and I just can't wait till Friday to see it. <laughs> Thanks for being in it. Yeah, what he, was say, what he was saying is if we were watching. Thank you for watched. calling in. Is he saying if we were being watched, they would think we were murdering all the time. We're talking about we're gonna kill, kill Rita, kill Cindy Price, kill this. <laughs> you know, we're talking about for the movie. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know. I guess this would be a good, but you know, a good place to interject this here. Now we talked about this last time. Now this movie has a lot of kids in it, but but it's really not a kids movie. No, not per se. No, so no. It's yeah. more directed towards just fans of horror. And, yeah. Um, there will obviously be a lot of kids at this premiere because they're in it. Um, some may not even be able to make it though, I'm sure. But, yeah. Um, I would recommend parents would watch it first or be there with them. Yeah. And um, you know decide what they want yeah. to see and everything. Yeah. It's and, just violence. And it's and, you violence know, and you know, and the thing about it is, you know, a lot of people, you know, they wonder, well, you know, why'd you have to make it that way? Well, it's a, it's a horror movie, and you and you can't have a horror movie without. You know, a little bit of blood little to it. Blood, you know, and yeah, it, it, it it just won't make a, a you know you can't have a a, a a vampire movie when the most integral part of the character's motivation is is blood. And mm -hmm. so, uh, but the thing about it is, when you see something on the screen, it looks really scary. But mm -hmm. I mean, you guys were telling me how you were using like uh, chocolate syrup with strawberries and stuff like that. We used all kinds of different things for blood. And so, uh, yeah, you know, the, the kids when they were doing it, they were probably just cracking up laughing. You probably had more trouble oh, yeah. to, to keeping them to, to, to keep a straight face on it. So it's not like the kids were actually like 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 vampiring other kids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, that's one thing. Uh, Done a lot of tricks and editing there, you know. Yeah. Yeah make things what's not scary when you're doing it live you see how it's done and everything yeah. it's not so scary or anything and, but then to watch it so it might be you know. and then so much when you have a movie you know it 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 all sorts of bills you know when with the lighting and the then the music especially the music you do a lot of scary music going on you know you have somebody walking across the parking lot and it's really tense if you got tense music playing and it's just right. somebody walking i i, I know there was a uh, uh TV show I used to like to watch it was called the uh, 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 Tales from the Dark Side, and they would show uh, this uh, uh, real pretty meadow, and they had this really spooky music, and you just said looked real sinister, and you could have played like something uh, uh, like bluegrass music or something you think it'd be like the beginning of a of a of a Disney film or something, mm -hmm. and then they would flip it uh, to where it was. Uh, uh, a negative of uh, of what you were looking at, and, and it would say uh, uh, the, the the it's the dark side. It's just like the light side, but only not as brightly lit. And it had this real spooky guy talking that, and that and it's all the way it sort of builds up to 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 to, 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 to evoke emotion in 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 a, in a, in a movie door. And so uh, these kids are doing some scary things, but they weren't scared while they were doing it. That's what I'm trying to say. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I just tuned in, so I don't know what y'all said so far. Uh huh. It's Darling. Uh, is there? Can y'all reveal how long the movie will be, or is that kind of like under wraps? Uh, it's an hour and forty minutes. Sweet. All right. Do you plan on bringing any tickets on campus? To try and sell something that way? Well, me and Myron, not, we usually have them with us everywhere we go. So if you see me any, anywhere, you can just kind of ask. And then they're also available at those stores. But, yeah, anytime you see me, I've, there's a good chance i probably got some in my pocket there. <laughs> I mean, if he didn't have a right. number, I could I appreciate it. Yeah. I will be there. All right. Sounds All right. We'll look forward to seeing Take you. Take it then. easy. All right. All right. And let's... Uh, you know, let's just to bring that up again. If you'd like to buy tickets, uh, you can buy tickets. Uh, now, the uh, Friday show is sold out, but there are still tickets available for the Saturday show and the uh, Sunday matinee. You can buy tickets for $7 at Stafford's Music or Woodall's Music or What's Your Sign in Uptown Martinsville. And those of you down around uh, the, uh, the, the, the Eden, North Carolina vein, 
uh, you can pick them up at uh, Screaming Eagle Tattoo. Now, uh, we'd like to... Um, to welcome the listeners on WMVA as they join the uh, talk of the town. You are listening to AM 1450 WMVA and AM 1370 WHEE Radio. You're watching on WYAT TV 40 and uh, also watching on Comcast 99. And uh, I'd like to say hello to all the folks down at uh, Chat Moss watching on Cat- Chat Moss 16. And uh, also streaming on the World Wide Web at www.martinsonmedia.com. And if you're just now joining us, uh, I have <coughs> Myron and Matt Smith here, and they are the directors, writers, producers, and actors in a movie that they uh, are having premiered, uh, are premiering here at, in Martinsville, Henry County at the Reeves Theater uh, this Friday called Young Blood Evil Intentions. And if you're just now joining us, I'll give you a really short uh, Reader's Digest and dense version of what the movie is about. You have this gentleman right here, and he has two daughters. And one daughter is a vampire, and then the youngest daughter has a birthday, and for a birthday present, guess what? The older daughter turns the younger daughter into a vampire. And then daddy here don't like that. He's trying to send them off to uh, some place where they can get straightened out. And they decide to get back at daddy by turning their whole class into vampires. And then uh, they, their, their class uh, are unleashed on the town. And so uh, this is shot here in Martinsville in Henry County. So a whole lot of the scenes that you see in the movie, you're going to recognize. They're going to be uh, scenes that, 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 that of uh, places you drive by every day. And there is even a scene that was shot right here in this room. Now did I, you know, did I do that about right? Did I, did I pretty much tell the plot the way, the way it needs to be told? That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. And you know, some of those places, um, you know, we filmed at. We had a uh, rollabout skating yep. center, um, El Nortino, uh, Mi Ranchito. Um, it was Irisburg Elementary School. So, and some of those scenes on Church Street, down at the Daily Grind, at the Jefferson Plaza. Yep. So, those are some of those places you guys might. Creative hair designs. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, this is uh, mainly local people in it, and we, and we think there's probably uh, about 150 people that were, that were involved as extras in this from the Martin Henry County area. But there are some famous people that are making cameos, and then some uh, people are doing uh, uh, larger parts. Uh, uh, Jason Newlander, uh, you might remember him from uh, The Lost Boys uh, as the character of Alan Frog, and he's going to be in that. He's, he's playing the mayor of town, and it's not Martinsville, it's Martin, Martindale. Martindale. Okay. And then uh, Sierra Holmes, uh, she's uh, um, someone who has been involved in uh, uh, VHM1 Scream Queens, and Sal Lizard, uh, who is a... Uh, uh, you, you're going to see Sal, to believe me, sort of a, a, a twist between uh, Christmas and Halloween. And then uh, Count Smokula, who is a uh, kind of like the macabre version of Weird Al Yankovic. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, how y'all doing, man? I'm calling from Rome, Georgia. Hey, how's it going? Oh, oh, man. It's going great, going great, man. Been watching y'all since the start of the show. Uh, can't wait till Friday. Good, yeah, good. Yeah, looking, looking, looking forward to it, to it. too. <laughs> So now you don't come up uh, all the way from Rome, Georgia, then, huh? Well, that, that, that's, oh, yeah. that's just really exciting oh, yeah. there. Yeah. You know, so now do you, know, know. It's, you know, do you know these guys here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've known their mother for quite a while. Yeah? Well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's originally and, uh, from here. And their dad, too. I think I've known their dad since he was 14 years old. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm not giving away my age or anything. No, that's all right. You know, you know, we're all, except for these guys here, are are, are long in the tooth around here. So, uh. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that's really cool. So now, do you got a, you, do you got a question about the movie here? You like to ask, uh, Myron and Matt? Well, well, uh, one thing we can't ignore is the boost to the local economy that this movie's uh, yeah creating. Yeah. Yeah, it really has. It has helped out a lot with different businesses and things. And yeah, yeah, we're putting a putting a spotlight, positive spotlight on the area. You yeah. know, bringing people in, bring them on, man. Every every bit helps. Right. Yeah, that's certainly know, true. Yeah, because we got Pete. Yeah. You you're coming from Georgia, and then I know 
Sal Lizard. I don't know if he's currently residing in New Hampshire, Indiana, but I know he'll be coming away. So definitely yeah. a lot of yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, we'll all be eating there and staying in motels and uh, shopping. Yeah, spending money. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's anything we can do to help the local economy. Uh, I'm what? proud to be. Uh, I was proud to be a part of it. Uh, having been born and lived just down the street from where the well, where the film's going to premiere, so that was uh, that was fun. That was a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Um, well, now you certainly are, 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 are correct on that. One hand does wash the other there. So. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Folks, uh, being in the um, uh, eating eating local restaurants and. Uh, being uh, involved in um, um, uh, staying in the hotels and so forth like that, yeah, definitely so. You know, one hand does yeah. definitely wash the other for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and uh, I'll be probably heading up that way Friday morning, and hope to see everybody there. I'm looking forward to it. All right, we're we're, we're looking forward to seeing you too. All right, man. Thanks for I'll calling. be there, and the little dog too. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. <laughs> if you'd like to call and talk to these guys, the number to call there is 632-5433. Or if you're calling out of the area, if you're watching on the internet, or if you're uh, watching out of the local calling area, you can call 866-670-5489. And we were talking about some famous people that are in this movie, and I guess this is the most famous person uh, that's in this movie. That um, I-, I think everybody's going to get a real kick out of this. Uh, the stool principal is none other than Eddie Munster. Uh, Eddie Munster, that's a, uh, that's right. You might remember uh, uh, Butch Patrick from being in the Munsters, and uh, he, uh, he he was played by an actor by the name of Butch Patrick. And believe it or not, uh, uh, Butch Patrick, aka Eddie Munster, is has the role of the principal here in Young Blood, Evil Intentions. But now, you see now, Butch Patrick has done a whole lot of uh, TV shows. He's been in, in TV shows like Bonanza and My Favorite Martian and Rawhide and The Real McCroys. And if you're a fan of soap operas, he was in General Hospital. And uh, uh, now uh, he is in um, Young Blood, Evil Intentions. And uh, he's... Um, uh, I guess he, he has a lot of name recognition there, and uh, I think that was quite a quite a uh, coup that you guys uh, uh, pulled off getting him there. And I, again, I have to ask this question. I've, I've asked this with all these people, but uh, especially with Book, Butch Patrick. How in the world did you get Eddie Munster to be in this movie? <laughs> yeah, that's what you asked me earlier. Yeah, we had just hit, hit him up and contact him. And you, yeah, what, just, what's it? See now, he wasn't sold on it right away, but uh, how do you find somebody like that? You know, that was re- really a question I wanted to ask. How do you find somebody like that? If you, you know, were you sitting there thinking, you know what, you know who would be good for the principal, Butch Patrick? Well, how do you get hold of Butch Patrick? Uh, how did you do that? That's uh, what you do. You just gotta kind of like, you know, you have in mind like who. Who would who would we like to have in this movie? Who would be great for this character, this character? And then we find it, you know, you just got to seek it out. I mean, it's, you know, we found his number there, and then and I called him up and talked to him, and, and they agreed to, you know, after a while, you know, I had, had to send him the script. and wow, that's yeah. Approved, but. yeah, I mean, I think one day me and Matt were literally just sitting around, and we were, brain, you know, we were talking, and then, like, you know, we need to see what Butch Patrick is up to these days. and. Yeah, and we, and we got in touch with them. And we're just kind of wondering, like, who's, who, who, who would we like to have in the movie? Who, who might be approachable? You know? Had you met him before um, or contacted him about this movie? No, this is our first. This yeah. is our first. That was contact. the first time I ever talked to him. So I would, I would like to heard that telephone, that telephone call conversation. Hello, this is uh, Myron and and Matt Smith from Martinsville, Virginia. Where? <laughs> Martinsville, Virginia. <laughs> Martinsville, Virginia. <laughs> Okay. Well, well, what can I do for you? <laughs> We'd like you to be in our movie. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah. that's and that's basically what happened. <laughs> sort of, sort of, and not exactly, but you know, it was like that. And then, yeah, then I had to email them some more information and stuff, yeah. and tell them the synopsis, and we just sent them the script. Up. I don't think we sent the whole thing, just his scenes and yeah. some some parts of things, and and they really. And then, really and then he had somebody to film him. And the, the yeah, his partner, Ethan, Ethan Tudor Dove. Yeah. Yeah. 
Christmas stuff. Well, uh, we've got some more people in this movie we'd like to talk with, and we're going to do that right after we take a little short commercial break. And we'll do that and be back with more of the Talk of the Town right after this, okay? I mean, honestly, y'all, I don't see why you have to be so hard on anybody. She thinks she's a vampire, threatens to kill me all the time. She's weird. You can never tell Mom and Dale about this. Here, you're gonna need this. Hi, I'm Mallory from Jim Mills Chrysler Dodge Jeep, located conveniently across from the Martinsville Speedway. Did you know that Jim Mills has been in business for over 53 years locally? We offer a lifetime warranty on all new vehicles sold. We also offer free Virginia State inspections to any vehicle new or pre-owned, as well as a Carfax on any pre-owned vehicle that we sell. If you are ready for a pleasant, comfortable car or truck sales experience, please call myself or one of our valued salespeople at 956-1211. Again, we're located across from the Martinsville Speedway. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your business. Have you been denied Social Security disability? If you have, don't give up. At Gardner, Barrow, Sharp & Reynolds, we've helped hundreds of people get the disability benefits they deserve. Give us a call for a free evaluation of your claim. We're located at 231 East Church Street, the Fidelity Bank Building in Martinsville. And you can even get a free brochure concerning your Social Security disability rights by calling us. Our telephone number is 638-2455. That's Gardner, Barrow, Sharp, and Reynolds. Join us for New Live with Pastor Terry Knight and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. here on TV40. Time to eat, you want something good, but you don't know where to go? Pandora's Lunchbox invites you to come choose from our menu of food that satisfies the soul. We have daily specials, we also have contests. Fried chicken every day, plate lunches, veggie plate specials, delicious homemade desserts, located at 101 Commonwealth Boulevard across from the Clock Building. Open Mondays and Tuesdays, 10.30 to 6, and Wednesdays through Saturdays from 10.30 until 8 p.m. Call your order in at 638-8800, Pandora's Lunchbox. I'm Buzz Aldrin, and over the years, I've learned that in space or on the ground, there is no substitute for experience. If you're a small business owner just getting started or trying to grow, contact SCORE, America's volunteer counselors to small business. They can help you in every aspect of your business, and it's free. Contact a SCORE counselor. Call 800-634-0245 or visit SCORE.org. Martinsville Scores, located in the Chamber of Commerce building on Braun Street. Counseling is available each Thursday at 12 noon on a first-come, first-served basis. Phone 632-6401 for more information. Not all storage centers are the same. Storage Center is the only all-indoor, climate-controlled storage facility in Martinsville, Henry County. With secure access 24 hours a day, loading docks for trucks and tractor trailers, pallet jacks and carts. Storage Center in Martinsville is not only excellent for personal storage, but is preferred for record-keeping, warehousing, and distribution. Storage Center off Memorial at Lavender and Cellars, Martinsville. 276-670-7867. You shouldn't be messing around with things you don't understand. These kids want to suck our blood. And 
welcome back to the Talk of the Town. Jamie Walker here with you on a uh, Monday afternoon filling in for Jesse, who is out and about here. But we got a real special treat here for you today. We have uh, been talking with the folks with um, Young Blood Evil Intentions. We had uh, Matt and uh, Myron Smith, who are the uh, writers and producers of the show. But now, you know, we've got the, uh, the I guess, the two parental figures here. And uh, that is uh, Rebecca Kidd here, who plays the mother of of Anime and uh, uh, and Anastasia. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I got tickled here. Uh, Myron moved into <laughs> his. Uh, now this is pretty much what you see him all the way through the movie. He's uh, got his wife beater on. <laughs> that man beat you. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's, that was an interesting uh, take. Yes, yes, he did. You're terrible. Sorry, can't but have he's abusive, Dale Buckmeyer. So. Uh, yeah. Can't have an abusive father figure without a little abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I the uh, there is a there is a scene in there where you were just so loving of your children. I wonder what my little angels are I up am to now. Oh, my little angels, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 no, yeah. not at all, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> there was a little sarcasm in that. <laughs> so tell me, you know, what's it like being in a horror movie? Have you ever done anything like this before? No, not really. Um, I mean, in high school, every now and then here and there, but nothing uh -huh. major. Um, yeah. I've known these guys forever, yeah. and one day I just, you know find out about the movie and yeah. I'm like hey you know I'll give it a shot it was fun um, but no I've never done anything like it before it was yeah. interesting yeah. definitely an experience well, well you know I uh, uh, saw you uh, do several scenes uh, whether I, I was in the background you know washing and so forth like mm -hmm. that and, you, and you're and you're real natural on camera you, you, you know you come across so really I've been really told yeah. that's strange yeah. I, yeah. it's like I'm a big ham yeah. or something yeah. <laughs> no no you know no and, but thank you you know something I think it's funny too you know now uh, when I was looking at this I uh, was looking at some of the people who were uh, who were who famous people in here mm. and this Sierra Holmes I thought uh, was um um, I got to reading her bio, and she's talking about how she was, uh, the you know in VH1 Scream Queens, and you know she's had several you know things on television. She's a real pretty girl, and you know uh, I just saw a, a quick picture of her, and I thought that that you were her, <laughs> and, I, and I and I thought well I, I thought this is really interesting because they had. Uh, uh, Sierra Holmes that played all the way through the movie, but no, 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 no. You, you know, and you are, and you are a local girl, aren't you? Just a little small town Martinsville. Yeah, well, you know, yep. I tell you what, you know, looking on the screen, I think you come across just as good as she does. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, you know, do you think this might be a springboard for something else for you here later? Um, it, it well, just like this, it was in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. if there happens to be another moment in my life when somebody says, hey, let's go make a movie. Mm -hmm. Let's go make a movie. But, okay. you know, as far as pursuing it, I don't, I don't really see yeah. it. But it was it was really enjoyable. So if, if the opportunity comes up again, yeah. yeah. So tell me, you know, uh, now you've, you know, you've already wrapped. The premiere is going to be Friday. Uh, when is the, um, what do you think is, you know, can you recall what, uh, a time when you were working on a movie that, that stands out as being real funny or real memorable? And, you know, you know, you know, and please know that there are 12 words that we don't like to say on radio or television. <laughs> um, let's just say that I had to uh, get sick on old Dale Buttonmire here. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was interesting. That took um, a lot of creativity yeah. to create said sickness and a lot of, of tolerance and patience on my part to be able to carry that out. <laughs> A lot of uh, holding in laughter, but we got through it. We got through it. Um, and then, of course, when I found him dead and, and I was crying, and I, I was picking on these guys because they made me cry so many times in front of the camera. I said, I'm a big crybaby. Yeah. And uh, so we're filming, and we're waiting on Matt to say action, and he says action, and all of a sudden I let out this little, you know, wah, everybody busts out laughing. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun doing it. Well, now, how do, how do you cry on cue? Mostly just cover your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's really uh, typically when women cry, we tend to, you know, just, just, and and so once you get that going and you kind of get the the eyes watering up, yeah. I don't do the whole thing about something yeah. sad. I yeah. just, I'm just a, a good faker. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, Dale Buckmeyer. You know, th- you know, did she make a good wife? You think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think we make a nice looking couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, do you have a story uh, to, you know, that 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 she'd rather not you tell <laughs> about working with uh, Re- Rebecca here on the set? Mm, not that I can think of. I mean, I'm sure we can find some ways to embarrass her. What's the DVD <laughs> the time that you couldn't out. look at my face. Yes, yeah. Yes. There was, yeah. You know, there was one of those moments. <laughs> kind of had a little fit of um, delirium or something. Yeah, some laughter. We couldn't look at each other. It was awesome. <laughs> I think it's where we just had to we had to keep going to cut and we had to just go from just being completely normal to just mm-hmm. being all serious and in the middle of an argument and it's just and we had shot for like a long time that yeah. day and I think we just both reached the point of it was everything was just funny <laughs> <laughs> and we just couldn't look at each other. <laughs> yeah. That's that's really cool. That's yep. really cool. Well, um, so now you're going to be at the premiere, are you? I am. Yep. Yep. Friday night. Yep. So um, you know you you've, you've, you've got your uh, Hollywood dress ready for it and everything like you don't you're looking like at that. it <laughs> <laughs> I'm a t-shirt and jeans but I wore this you in the movies you wear so. that too <laughs> yeah. you sh- hey I'm wearing my costume yeah 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 I, I might I might change out halfway yeah. you know, I got three days you know so I might I might do something slightly different each time you know what would yeah. be really cool is if uh, you, you know this really catches on and then you have a repeat showing of how uh, you know during Halloween season you know and you do it again mm-hmm. you know if you guys start knocking on people's door at, at Halloween you know <laughs> trick or treat <laughs> trying to get us in trouble yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm going to call Sheriff Bacon well, okay. as long as we have a kid with us we can do it we'll I have one of those bring, yeah he's in the movie too yeah okay so we'll yeah. just bring your kid and go trick or treat and then we'll yeah. bring our bag too <laughs> yep yeah. and try yeah. to also get some candy that's really that's good. That's how it works. Well, now, we're going to take a uh, commercial break here. We're rapidly running out of town here. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And and we're going to take that commercial break, and we'll come back, and we're going to play a clip from uh, the movie. So uh, don't you go away, okay? A delicious and unique dining experience awaits you at Rania's Restaurant, Bar and Grill. Rania's has the cure for your restaurant boredom. Our exciting menu offers flavors of Italian, Spanish, French, and American cuisine. Meet your friends for a cocktail around our fully stocked bar. Celebrate your special occasion in our spacious yet elegant banquet room. Join us for lunch or dinner at Rania's Restaurant, Bar and Grill in Uptown Martinsville. Join us for Rania's Express Lunch every day. Why go to a fast food restaurant when you can order from our $5 menu? Soup and mixed green salad or Caesar salad. Chef salad with ham, turkey, and organic egg. Rania's Greek salad, organic scrambled eggs, meat lasagna, or fettuccine with fresh made Alfredo sauce. How about spaghetti with homemade meat sauce or spaghetti with homemade marinara sauce? For only $5.99, eggplant parmesan. And on the $6.29 menu, chicken kebab salad or chicken Dijon salad salad with jalapeno, grilled chicken salad, and for $6.99, chicken fettuccine alfredo. These are just some of the entrees available at Rania's for the express lunch. Come by and see us today. The Do Drop In is your place for food, fuel, and more. Located at 201 Chatham Road in Martinsville, near the intersection of 57 and 58 East Martinsville. Stop by for breakfast, get a stack of pancakes with syrup, or a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. Eat in or take out. We've got delicious soft serve ice cream or milkshakes and delicious fried chicken made fresh every day. Homemade desserts and lottery tickets. Stock up while you fill up. We're a full service convenience store with a little bit of everything. Come see us, browse the store, find out all the different items we have in stock. When it comes to convenience items, you'll find it here at the Dew Drop In. We specialize in ice cold beverages or beverages made with ice. If you prefer a hot drink, we've got coffee and cappuccinos. At the Dew Drop In, we have a full menu of burgers and sandwiches all made to order. We're open Monday through Friday, 6 to 9, Saturday, 7.30 to 9, Sunday, 9 to 6. To order, call 638-3079. It's the Dew Drop In. Don't ever say there's nothing to do when you're only a short drive to Cue Ball Family Arcade and Billiards, located at 6629 Greensboro Road in the Ridgewood Plaza, across from Clarence's Steakhouse. 
These days, we're all working extra hard, and it's good to know there's a place nearby you can go to have a little fun without emptying your wallet. It's your shot. Don't worry about a babysitter. Bring the kids. T-Ball Family Arcade and Billiards has something for the whole family. Billiards, arcade games, air hockey, foosball, and a real cool driving machine. Rack them up! And don't forget, ladies shoot free Monday nights from 6 until 11 p.m. So girls, what do you like best here at Q-Ball Family Arcade and Billiards? I like the video games. I like the pool cues. I like the accessories. I like the pool things. And if you really take your billiard game seriously, you'll be glad to know that Q-Ball Family Arcade and Billiards is an authorized Balabushka dealer for cue sticks, bags, carrying cases, pool balls, training balls, gloves, tip accessories, and Balabushka chalk. And they also have a fine selection of Sterling and Fury cues. Q-Ball Family Arcade and Billiards, located at 6629 Greensboro Road, Ridgeway. Come by and see us. We're directly across from Clarence's Steak and Seafood House. Talmadge Services is your one-stop source for major home appliance parts and repairs. Complete HVAC sales and service and full facilities maintenance services. Our experienced master license technicians will provide quality, dependable, and affordable solutions to your repair, installation, or your maintenance needs. And when it comes to major appliance repair, we provide the service calls to your home or business. And when it comes to major appliance parts, we specialize in those hard-to-find parts all makes and models. We provide professional facilities maintenance from preventive to lighting to even desk and file cabinet repairs. We have 64 years combined experience in HVAC including duct sealing and repairs of all kinds. We're state licensed and provide free estimates. Talmadge Services has been locally owned and operated for 53 years and we're proud of our commitment to exceptional customer service. Call us today for honest repair and maintenance estimates and advice. We're located at 518 West Church Street in Martinsville, 632-9828. Now is the time to get your air conditioning or heating and cooling unit in top working order. Don't wait. Get it done now. While other companies are charging premium rates right now, Talmadge Services is offering special discounts and even reasonable maintenance agreements for budget-conscious businesses. Well-maintained equipment is the key to lower costs they don't come any more credible than Talmadge Services, so call today. 632-9828, 632-9828, that's 632-9828. Hi, I'm Tommy Lasorda, and I love helping anybody who loves baseball. There's a terrific team of volunteers who are available to help small business owners get started and grow. They are the counselors of SCORE, and they can help you have a winning team. By the way... The price is right because the admission is free. So contact the folks at SCORE. To contact a SCORE counselor, call 800-634-0245 or visit SCORE.org. Martinsville SCORE is located in the Chamber of Commerce building on Braun Street. Counseling is available each Thursday at 12 noon on a first-come, first-served basis. Phone 632-6401 for more information. And if you would like to come to the movie, the tickets are sold out. They're sold out for Friday, but there's still tickets available for Saturday and Sunday shows. And we're talking about the Young Blood Evil Intentions local movie by local folks, starring local folks here locally. I guess you would call that a local movie. And uh, the world premiere of Young Blood Evil Intentions is going to be uh, this Friday, September 21st at 9 p.m. And then Saturday. Uh, September 22nd, there's still tickets available. That show is also at 9 o'clock. And then there's going to be a Sunday matinee at uh, 3 p.m. And there's, uh, if you'd like to uh, get tickets, here's where you get the tickets at. You can go to uh, some local locations here that are easy to find. Uh, Stafford Music and Woodall's Music and What's Your Sign in Uptown Martinsville and those folks down in uh, around the Eden, North Carolina way go to Streaming Ink Tattoo and the tickets are $7. And, um, and uh, really, really, really cool movie. And it's going to be, um, you know, we've got Halloween coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, definitely want to make plans to, uh, to be a part of that. 
All right. Uh, I'm. Uh, you know. No. We're, we're we're rapidly running out of time here. I'm with the uh, producers, directors, and uh, stars of the movie, uh, Matt and uh, Myron Smith. And uh, let's uh, let's watch a clip from the movie. Well, I got I got a I got a clip from the movie, and uh, you can get a little taste of what you're going to see at the uh, theater here. So let's see what 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 this clip is about. <laughs> How in the world did you talk your mother into being in this movie? <laughs> well, you got both the parents in it. So, um. Yeah, the funny thing, how did we convince our, our father to... Yeah, yeah, uh, that, you know, that's, that's pretty funny. Too. He, he dresses up in drag. He plays uh, uh, the grandma, doesn't he? <laughs> what, what made you think of, 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 of using your father as a grandma? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you hate to, to ask a, a woman to... To play the role, of, you know, when you're say, hey, I, I really have this role I'd like you to play in the movie. Oh, what is it? Uh, the grandmother. What? Oh, why do you pick me? Because well, you're old. I mean, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was it was all right to do that to your dad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, hey uh, guys, it it was a delight having you on the show here, and I am really stoked and looking forward to the movie. And you know, you know, would like to remind the folks one more time here. Uh, you know, we, uh, I really think this is a really cool movie, and I really encourage everybody to go out there to it. But now I do want to, like, you know, we want to make sure that people understand that this movie has children in it, but it's really not a children's movie. And uh, you know, what you really need to do is, you know, you need to go see it and decide whether it's okay for your kids to go see it, and then that way uh, you can uh, kind of tell, you know, because. Uh, um, some folks, you know, wouldn't want, want the kids to go see it, and some folks would be fine with it. But, you know, that doesn't change the fact that it's a really good movie, and uh, everybody's going to really enjoy it to go to it. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'll be there. And uh, <clears throat> I think I, I think a lot of people are going to be there, too, because already the first show is is is, uh, is uh, uh, sold out, and uh, I really hope that... Um, that, that you do so well with it, you bring it back for Halloween. I just think that would be so cool if you guys could have that movie playing Halloween night. <laughs> we'll see. You see know. Yeah, you know, follow our, our pages and we'll definitely keep everybody updated. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're on uh, youngbloodmovie.com and on Facebook. So. Yeah. All right, then. So that's it. We are we're we're over time right now. So I uh, you know want to say so long, and uh, we will. Um, See you next time on the Talk of the Town. I'll be back with you again on, uh, let's see, when am I going to be here again? Wednesday. Bill will be here with you tomorrow. And then I hope to see you at the premiere. So long, everybody. It's time present. I'm going to give you something much better than a material possession. I'm going to turn you into a vampire just like me. You can never tell Mom and Dale about this. Are we going to get in trouble when Dale sees my neck? Sorry, Kramer Sorry, Kramer There's blood. There's mayhem. There's disembowelment. Dismemberment. It's horrible. It's awful. You shouldn't be messing around with things you don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. We're going to turn the whole school into vampires, and there will be blood. What got into you? The whole student body is going to the nurse's office. Anna Oh, I know what my little angels are up to now. Disregard this call. You're hiding something. You were there, weren't you? You got nothing on me. The biggest thing I can I can emphasize is it's it's important to stay calm. We must vanquish the evil by any means necessary. But what can we do, preacher? Kill those vampires! Yeah! Yeah! We're all gonna do something about it! Yeah! Yeah! These kids wanna suck our blood? The children have to. You've got to learn to control that temper of yours. Oh my god! <laughs>